Hey guys, it's Blair with The Verge and I'm here with Raj Saluri, Vice President of Product Management for Snapdragon and Qualcomm. And we're here at MWC in Barcelona and this is really the first time that you're showing off your new chip, the Snapdragon S4. So let's start with the basics. What is the Snapdragon? What is the composer? Well, you know, um, Snapdragon is our uh, platform for smartphones yeah. and it has many, many different components in it. You know, one is a leading edge uh, apps processor, which is the CPU, the GPU, you know, the video, the camera and all that. And then it also has uh, our uh, modem technology, which is a 2G, 3G and 4G LTE. And also it has a Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, FM, GPS. So it's all of this combined into one chipset. And, and when you actually look at it in terms of a physical yeah. thing, it's just one chip? Right. So uh, basically all of this technology is in one chip, uh, but we also have uh, power management and RF, uh, which are like smaller chips on the side. But the majority of all the digital is in one chip. So we put it all inside one die. With the RF stuff, you, you, you're like a year away from sticking that into the chip as well, right? You just want to bundle everything in. Yeah, you know, we make those decisions based on the technology node. You know, RF and a different kind of technology from digital. Um, so, you know, at any given point of time, you're always making those trade-offs, which goes inside, which goes outside. Sure. But most of the digital stuff, where all the heavy lifting is done, uh, we put it all inside uh, one chip. And the big, the big change for you this year is that the LTE um, connectivity chip is inside the chipset. It's integrated with everything else. Right. Uh, I mean, that obviously should bring in some power management uh, or power efficiency advantages, right? Yeah, I mean, so so if you look at the LTE phones that's on the market today, you know, basically they have uh, an apps processor and they have uh, an LTE modem on the outside and they have uh, two different memory systems, you know, two different power managements. So there's actually multiple chips to make an LTE phone. And that's one of the reasons why uh, you know, the battery life of the LTE phones isn't that great. Um, what we've done with S4 is for the first time we've taken the LTE uh, modem and put it inside the Snapdragon. Um, and then uh, we also did that and we did it in 28 nanometer, which is a yeah. leading edge process technology. So that combination of a 28 nanometer you know, with an LTE modem inside really improves the power. Um, so that uh, we believe that uh, you know, S4 based uh, you know, uh, phones when they come out with LTE, they'll have great performance and extremely low power, uh, which is what we're really Can excited about. Can you quantify about. that at all in terms of how much percentages perhaps more battery life you might squeeze out of an LTE phone with this rather than an older generation? Um, I, don't, I don't have precise numbers for you. Uh, it'll be much better and, I, and the reason I'm saying that is because uh, most people who go from one phone to the other don't keep everything else the same. Like they change the display, That's they true. change the camera, yeah. and all that. But uh, clearly, you know, you know, you'll get uh, you know all day battery life and uh, you know great performance. That's a big claim. All day yeah. battery life out of an LTE phone. Well, it's not, that, that's what uh, we're shooting at, and I believe that will be there. Well, speaking of shooting at things, yeah, I do feel like you've kind of been eating Nvidia's lunch recently because Tegra three devices have been announced. Right. Everyone is excited about quad core, and then they come to the United States, they get LTE, and all of a sudden they have a Qualcomm chip inside. <laughs> And there seems, there seems to be an issue there because yeah. NVIDIA doesn't have a strategy or, you know, uh, I guess a hardware proposition where LTE and the core core device are on there. So you have an advantage in, in, in that space, right. right? Yeah, well, there's a couple of, uh, there's a few different advantages we have, uh, you know, over our competition. You know, one of them is the fact that uh, we are the only LTE integrated, uh, you know, product on the market today. Uh, that clearly has all the power advantages and also the die size advantage, cost advantage, and all that that comes with integration. But the other big advantage we have is uh, we are one of the very few people who make our own processors. So we don't uh, license uh, CPU core from, from on directly. We actually are a licensee of their uh, instruction set. And we build the processor from scratch. And when we do that, uh, we get a lot of advantages. Like, for example, you've seen some of the benchmarks from uh, Anand Tech and whatnot where you see that uh, our dual core processor actually performs much better than, uh, you know, than the quad cores. And, uh, and the reason for that is uh, we, when we build the processor from scratch, we have much higher uh, DMIPS per megahertz and the performance is a lot more optimized for mobile. We have much better power numbers. So even with two cores, you know, we're running at one and a half gigahertz, they have much higher performance than uh, you know, the A9s when they have four yeah. of them. And that advantage, together with the fact that we've integrated the LTE, and the fact that we have a very high performance GPU, which we also built from scratch, those are some of the you know, key advantages S4. And you know, there's another one which you know, has not been written about a lot, 
uh, but it's a big advantage is that uh, we integrated the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, FM, GPS also inside. Yeah. So you need, need you don't need a separate Wi-Fi chips outside. You just need the you know the analog part of it. All the digital is inside. So it reduces the number of chips inside the phone. Would you say that helps in making thinner and smaller phones then? Yeah, thinner, smaller phones. Uh, you know, more uh, more uh, power efficient. Uh, less expensive because you're not paying for multiple packages of multiple chips. So a lot, a lot of advantages of integration. So what you're saying is you're taking full credit for the HTC One S, the really thin one. It's all your fault. Well, you know, HTC did a great job. You know, yeah. uh, you know, with the whole ID and everything. But you know, we helped with the right kind of uh, components in there, so the component count has come down a lot. So we are pretty happy with the results. And speaking about the CPU, because CPU is part of the whole Snapdragon proposition, and the great CPU is the thing that's at the core of your Snapdragon S4. Yeah. And the dual cores are coming out at the moment. Can you tell us about the crate? I understand it has some of ARM A15 in it, but it's still your specific design. Well, the best way to look at crate is, uh, you know, you know, ARM, you know, has an instruction set called V7, which basically defines uh, the instruction set that you're supposed to uh, follow, so all the software runs on it. You know, and uh, and A9 and A15 are both V7 instruction set uh, compatible. So Crate is too, and Scorpion, the one we did before, is too. So the same software will run on uh, Crate and A15 and A9s. So really, there's no difference in terms of software. But Crate is a, a lot more optimized for mobile. Uh, because we, you know, we designed this process from scratch, what we're able to do is we're able to run this processor at much higher clock speed, but get much lower power. That's actually one of the big advantages. The other way to look at it is, if you said, hey, we want it, if you want to run it at, uh, I don't know, take a certain amount of power for some application, you actually, if you limit the power, you get much higher clock speed. Or if you said, I wanted to fix the clock speed and get this kind of performance, your power will be much lower. That's the big advantage of Crate versus, you know, just licensing, uh, you know, a core from uh, from ARM because we optimized it for power. Um, you know, it, it is really a, a much higher performance. And uh, A15 is kind of the same class as Crate, yeah. uh, but Crate's here and now. And, and A15 uh, and is next year. A15 will ship next year, and we're going to be shipping Crates this year. So we have a you know significant advantage in timing. So let me ask you on the on the topic of power efficiency. A colleague of mine is really psyched about Nvidia's fifth core, the companion core, yep. which runs at low power. Yep. It saves battery life. How do you compete with that? Are you, do you feel confident that you in the in the S4, the Snapdragon S4 chips? Including the, your quad core ones. Yeah. Do you feel confident you can compete with that power efficiency from Nvidia? Yeah, a very good question. So, see, what happens is uh, when you take something like an A9, and uh, you know, as Nvidia, some of our other competition has done, and you run it much harder to get that performance of 1.5 gigahertz or whatnot, you're pushing the processor both in voltage and you're pushing the processor in uh, to get to that frequency. So you're burning a lot more power. So what the, you know people do that have to do is they have to put this other core. Uh, to make it run uh, in lower clock speed and take less power. The way we designed Crate is that the same core that we have actually is very power efficient even when you run it at low clock speed or high clock speed. So we don't need that you know, other core, if you will, uh, to run at lower clock speed to take less power. The Crates themselves can scale all the way from very low power mode and very high power mode based on how you want it. That's the uniqueness about the crate design, that we don't need the need for this other core. In fact, our quad core, which we are showing here, which has all four crates running at one and a half gigahertz, um, even in that case, we don't need another core because each of the crates can be throttled down all the way and throttled up all the way high You know, when you need the performance. And the other interesting thing we did when we designed crates is um, we are able to control the, all the four crates and even the two crates independently. What that means is the way we designed our memory system and the caches, when you need a lot of performance, we can run the one crate very high and uh, we can turn the other crate off. Or we can start cranking, you know, turning on the other crate but run it at just enough clock speed to do what's needed to be done. Most of our competition has to run you know, pretty much all, all of them, all, the of them all cores yeah. at the same speed. So they need this other one to, you know, to you know, do the power throttling. We don't need that, you know, because of the way the crate is designed, and that's, you know, why we are, you know, pretty comfortable with our design. So your design is basically more elegant than Nvidia's. It's more elegant and it's more uh, optimized for mobile. It's more that's exactly what we focus yeah. on: optimizing it for mobile and for battery life. So let's just uh, to wrap up. Let's talk about the future. The Snapdragon S4, the dual core version. Uh, we've seen uh, quite a few phones announced here at MWC. They'll be shipping soon. 
I haven't heard much about the single core S4, and uh, can you tell us about the roadmap for the quad core version? Yeah, so, so I'll talk about the quad core. The quad core version of the S4, uh, we announced it last year, but uh, we are very pleased that it's actually sampling, and we just got silicon back just a few weeks ago, but uh, with all the you know really solid work the engineering teams have done pre-silicon, you know, just a couple of weeks from the time we got it, we're able to show it in our uh, in our booth today in a tablet. So yeah. it's here. We got all four pages working. That's the next generation graphics core in it. So hopefully in the next few months you'll see a lot more from us on that. Uh, you know, on that you know quad core version of S4. Um, we have different versions of uh, S4 going down to you know lower and lower into the tiers, and uh, and you'll see them coming out. Uh, you know, to address you know the the fifty dollar, hundred dollar smartphones you know, in time. So all of them are on track and coming out. When though? I mean, in uh, time, there's a uh, little so of time for now. Uh, we have announced a few products. We haven't announced all of them, mm -hmm. but uh, definitely this year you'll see a lot more of them. I mean, at this point, uh, most of our products are in the you know hands of our customers, so they're yeah. making phones. And as you saw, they announced a few phones at this uh, this show. As the year goes through, you'll see a lot more products come out. Okay. There'll be lots of S4 and products. You, and your next graphics year. chip is the Adreno 300 series, right? Above? And that's Adreno 320 is yeah. the one that's in the quad core, the 8064. And, uh, and then, of course, we'll have Adreno 4s and Adreno 5s in time you know, to just follow up on, that, uh, on the traction. Okay. So wh when might be the earliest time we see a quad-core S4 phone come out on sale? We are hoping by end of this year. By the end of this year? Yeah. 